It was acquired by the United States in 1864 in the Oregon Treaty. They called it Montana, which of course in Spanish means mountainous country. You know, I know that sounds like a quote from Anchorman, but actually it's the truth. We've been coming to the same state for seven years now to kick off our hunting season and in no way is that depressing. See what I did there? Two Anchorman spoofs in the first like minute of the show. Don't act like you're not impressed. One of my favorite states to hunt in Montana. You can see why right here. It's been a hunt of a lifetime, seriously, seeing all these deer. No man, but on a serious note, it just wouldn't feel right if we didn't kick off our red air season in Montana. The cottonwood thickets in the river bottoms are absolutely slammed full of white-tailed deer. The mountains are teeming with tons of elk. And they got about as many pronghorn antelope in the plains as there are left-wing social justice warrior protesters at a Donald Trump rally. You know, in my excursions to Montana each year, I've met a lot of Montanans that we look forward to reconnecting with each year. This year, we're gonna be linking up with my good buddies, Cody and Jordan, as well as Austin Jessup of Hunt Force Nutrition in Western Montana. You know, I've been hunting with the Idings brothers on their family farm right by the Jefferson River for a few years now. Killed a couple of good deer, brought my dad out there. He got his first buck with a bow and arrow and his first doe. Two years ago, I started elk hunting with the boys out there, and in a short amount of time in some of Montana's most beautiful backcountry, we laid down some killer elk footage. This year, I'm excited about going back to Montana because of all the tags I got. I mean, it says right here in my license that I can choose between either sex or an elk. Oh, it's a, no, it's a either sex elk tag and either sex deer tag. I, I read that wrong. I'm embarrassed. I got a pronghorn tag too. Well, I mean it's gravel, I'm as dirt. And I like things better the way they work. Well, I'm strong in the head, but I get things done. I spend too much money to have a little fun. Come on. Right now, I'm pulling an all-nighter driving up from New Mexico while the boys are out doing a little bit of arm scouting. Hopefully, they spot me a good one. We're out here in Montana. First day of elk hunting. Kip's getting in in a couple hours, so we're gonna try to shoot his ball for him. <laughs> Uh, we got a couple right up in front of us bugling. We've seen one coming in on the four-wheeler, so hopefully we have some luck today. We finally made it to Montana. We just crossed through a patch of fog and hit the state line and we might take a little quick nap and we'll see what the elk are doing. Josh is already here with uh, Jordan and Austin. Hopefully they're out scouting some elk for us right now or killing some. Got one bull bugle.
closer right now. You know, finally this bull just figured something wasn't right and he just left. Bye, Felicia. What? Too many cows with him, I think. Really? About 10 cows. Can't get him to come. He's 94 yards. Why don't you shoot him? <laughs> I, I thought about it. He just went over the top bigger than the one I shot last year. It took us a long time to get here, but I know mad. Hi guys, hi Bob. Well, this is nice checking in. I'm trying to wake up. Job pretty good, huh, Dad? Yeah, it's good. Yeah, nice school. Couldn't get yeah. close enough. Josh said y'all had me at like 90 yards. Yeah. I had one screaming in my face yesterday at 32 yards. <laughs> Sorry if I don't seem enthusiastic. Just drove 15 hours straight through from Mexico. I'm a bit fried. <laughs> <laughs> I've been, man, I've been looking forward to this for, well, pretty much, you know, 364 days ago. <laughs> you might ask yourself, Kip, how come you've been looking forward to this hunt for 364 days? And my answer to you would be because on the first day of the hunt last year, this happened. You got that footage? We should roll it now, probably. Oh, it's right there, right there. You ready? <laughs> That's unbelievable. That's awesome. This happened fast. This is not the way it usually happens. And Austin and Jordan got set up behind us, called this bull right in 19 yards, slightly quarter and two, had to shoot through a little bit of a bush, but he was just gushing blood, wasn't he, boys? Well, moon is bright. It's the first morning. We had a little bit of a quick hunt last year. Killed an elk up on this ridge. But this first day, we've got, we've got a week. The sun's just starting to crack daylight. We brought the ranger back up in here. Old Jordan had one yesterday at about 90 yards. They couldn't get him any closer. So I'm excited to be back. Let's go get one. Well, uh, a lot of good mixing up that Hunt Force Nutrition was this morning because I left it in the Ranger along with my water and deodorant. So. I won't have any energy in my death thirst and if we get busted it's probably gonna be my fault. So far so good. Your lungs are looking at you kind of like, where'd all the oxygen go? You just gotta tell him it's not here. He lives back in Virginia. It's still fun though. Look at this view man. You know, we hadn't seen an elk yet, but we got to be getting close because I swear I can smell them. Elk pee. I was like, man, I smell elk. Half the bottle was poured out in my pocket all over my rangefinder. Cargo pants, a lot of great uses. Storing elk pee, not one of them. It's not to worry about getting smelled anymore. Tip of the week, uh, get in shape before elk season. It's too late to do it now. It's like practicing during a game. It just doesn't really help. The deal is we heard one bugle over in these aspens. I spotted two cows, but uh, it's super windy. So, I mean, it makes it tough because we can't hear anything much. We know there's one bull in these aspens, but the problem is that's the property line. And if we end up going right into him, we could bump him. And so far, that's the only bull we've seen. So we're gonna go up to these, we're gonna hike up to these rocks, and glass this other side, just to make double sure there's nothing else on the property that we could hunt. Because anything we push this way is fine, but if we push something over this hill, it's like, you know, might not come back, so.
Well, since the elk weren't cooperating, we decided to switch gears and do a little whitetail hunting. However, I've got a hunt next week in eastern Montana at Powder River Outfitters, so I don't necessarily want to burn my buck tag. So I asked Cody and Jordan if we could do a little meat hunting. And if you guys have ever watched the show before, you know how much I love killing does. Y'all should try it sometime. They eat pretty good. I think this wind is going to keep the deer down a little bit tonight. Here's the scary thing about this. I'm hunting with my good friend Travis Anderson out in eastern Montana next week. What we're trying to do is flip-flop the hunt because the elk hunting's not that great right here and now. We're out here on doe patrol. You know how that works. We're trying to shoot a doe so a buck's going to definitely come out. So deer finally started moving our way, and wouldn't you know it, a wily coyote and his cousin came out. Oh, two coyotes, two big coyotes, cruising the fence line. And ran all our deer off. If I was a road runner right now, I'd be ordering an Acme sniper rifle. It's going that way fast. That's what that tells you. It's going right, right to where that we want the deer to come from. I think I just saw a house fly by. If I shot in this wind, the arrow would turn around and come back and hit me in the face. Eventually the wind laid out and the deer did start to move, just not in bow range of us, but we did see one pretty nice buck. house go. Yeah, that house is pretty trashed, but I guess it's nice enough for somebody who's only one and a half. It's good to be a deer homeowner. Now I'm talking about a monster walks through on old Jordan. Right in the shooting lane, 45 yards. I killed a deer out of that tree stand last year, so I know how far that hole was. And I, I know what he's thinking. He's thinking that deer has walked through that gap and he's about to walk through a 25 yard gap. Uh-uh. That deer took a hard right face and walked straight away from Jordan, breaking his heart, I would imagine. We just had the giant come through here. Can't really get a shot in there. We got a tree laying down right here. Right now he's headed right to Kip and Josh, so hopefully he'll come in range for them. A big herd of elk is right on the neighbor's property. Just because they're still not moving into our property deep enough, we don't want to take a risk and head up that way and risk pushing them further back into the neighbors. So the plan was for that evening is we were gonna do the ultimate in bow hunting in my opinion. I mean, on the ground, no ground blind, no face mask. We were gonna rely on our real tree camouflage, our scent control with our scent crusher and our hardy face paint because we're right there eye level with these deer. More importantly, nose level with them. Well, it's our second evening deer hunting in Montana. Tonight, we're after one of my favorite species kip, to pursue, kip, kip. which is doe in range, doe in range. The one right there. Crap. Oh, behind grass.
You know, on this ground setup, me and Josh are about 20 yards apart. So from his perspective, it makes it look like I've got a clean, clear shot at this doe, but she is completely obstructed behind a tree from my perspective. All right. I need her to just step one more time. That tree was blocking at me. That was cool though. Did you have her at all? Like, yeah, I had her really good. That was fun. We're gonna get it again. That next one might not be so lucky. down right there. I had to guess the distance. I guessed it perfect. I hit her a little far forward, but I heart shot her. Did you get her? Yeah. Hurt her tail started going like this and I did a barrel roll. Well, me and Josh had to ease up to our feet to even make this shot with the bow and on the camera. But what we didn't realize was Jordan and JC were hunting in a tree stand where they saw the kill, not only saw it, but filmed it. We just watched a kill. This was the first time I was putting the afflictor broadhead to the test and it shot slammed through this deer, blew out the offside shoulder and buried up about a foot in the dirt. Right through the first shoulder and out the shoulder bone right here out of her neck. Blades are still intact, everything's still good. That's pretty cool, man. First red arrow of the season on a little doe here in Montana. Look at that doe, look how big she is. Hey, hey. It's an inch and a half afflictor. That's my first deer of the season. We got the party started in Montana. I'm pretty pumped about this. I do have to say one thing about the electric ranger. It is super awesome to have as a tool. You don't disturb, you go in there nice and quiet and you get out nice and quiet, man. There's nothing quite like it. Call me lazy, but I like using technology to my advantage. Well, boys and girls, we had a fun time on Red Arrow this week. We just want to thank the guys and girls who support our show. We like to get out there and bloody up the woods, turn some arrows red, crossbow hunters, gun hunters too, rock hunters, stick hunters. Whatever you like to do, we support you and we thank you for watching the show. Also got to thank my homeboys, Cody, Austin, and Jordan. Thank you guys so much for taking us hunting, man. We have a ball every year that we come out and hunt with you guys. We can't wait to get back out here in Montana next week. We got to go after some whitetail, some mule deer, pronghorn antelope, spot and stalk in the open country. Y'all also don't forget to check out our online store. We got a lot of cool apparel and uh, I'm not sure if I can plug that or not, but uh, I just did. so. Have a great week, and we're going to kill some more stuff in Montana right here next week on Red Arrow. And they got more pronghorn antelopes. Antelopes. And they got about as many pronghorn antelopes in the plant. Why don't I say antelopes? Like cantaloupes. I think you still say cantaloupe. I'm not really sure what the plural of cantaloupe is. Cantaloupes. I have many. I have, I have many cantaloupes in my truck. I have many cantaloupe in my truck. See, now, if it's, I got a lot of cantaloupes in my truck, why isn't it I have a lot of dead antelopes in my truck? One of life's mysteries. <laughs> we may never know the answer.